Hey guys, so I wanted to do a, well, maybe a short video on a little concept of mine, making a dynamic character GI, instead of relying on uh, the, uh, what are they called again, the uh, reflection probes and light probes and all that, just using one singular tiny uh, frame buffer, or extra frame buffer, a render texture, and using that as a uh, GI global illumination method and this is how it looks and the thing on top here is a uh, it shows what the GI sees and so it's then being applied to a sphere and I think it looks rather convincing actually like the the white uh, paint on this floor texture here nicely refract, refract <laughs> reflects rather onto the steer could be applied to whatever object like a character or whatever yeah so that's enough demonstrating how it looks let's show off the actual code or the nodes so all of this is basic uh, shader stuff like you have a texture map which, which you could also choose like a color you have a metallic map with a metallic uh, value slider a glossiness map and all that normal maps nothing too advanced but this is the only thing that's actually like the custom stuff so you get the object's position and the world position well the world position is sort of so you can always um, project a uh, texture in whatever space you want. You can have it from uh, the sides, from below or from above, and I've chosen it to only be from above, so it's all always being displayed. If you look at the, uh, the gizmo here, the Z and the X axis in world space, and then it also uses the, the object's own position and or well, sets its own position at the pivot point so it always follows the, the the UV map always follows the 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 character in world space otherwise it would just be in zero zero in world space and so you add the uh, yeah can't really remember why I used the one minus here but probably some logic behind it and they just add it onto the the world position so it always knows where it's been displayed and then you divide it so you have like a GI scale and you do that because uh, if I show it off here it's kinda hard to see actually <clears throat> might be easier if I go below if I hide the icons like that a bit uh, it's really hard to see this take off the blur, move the sphere around to like, uh, I don't know, like here. Okay, you can see it, it's been uh, reflected, right? Or applied to itself. So if we now go and change the scale, you can see it's actually changing the actual scale of the. Um, <clears throat> of the UV like you can see it's being repeated but since the scale is 2 so I just set it to 2 <clears throat> sorry about that so that's that this is basically basically just creating or setting up logic for the world space UV mapping and then you have a normal texture or just a regular texture map 2d node into a multiply and then you set like a GI strength this is for like if you don't want it to be this strong of a GI you could set it to something smaller like a lot more subdued because if you turn it off no GI at all because it doesn't get bounce sliding from anywhere there, there are no uh, light probes in the scene at all so, 
and that's the the whole concept of it. And then it's also being uh, chained or affected by a Fresnel node, otherwise it would look like would be kind of like this. It might look okay, but now you don't have any effect on the from the normal map, right? And th this is just a. Uh, the uh, post-processing, if I turn that off, or rather go in here and turn it off, well you can see it, but it's not really that strong, right? But if you set this Fresnel value down to like 1, that's a lot more pronounced and you actually see like the, the indentations of bumps on the surface, because it has bumps on the surface, it has a normal map applied to it, and here's almost gone. So, that's a nice thing to have. You can set it to whatever value, like if you want something to be a lot more reflective, right? But reflective surfaces don't get, like, all that much um, GI, global illumination, applied to it, so... But for, like, a surface like this, a more uh, opaque surface like this, I think it looks... Alright, with uh, doing like that. Doing like that, yes. Um, and then you basically just hook that up to a, a set node, uh, and call it whatever, and put it into the diffuse ambient light. <clears throat> Otherwise we'd have to put it into uh, the emission if you had, if you were using, uh, no wait, it does support it. Oh, okay, I have, never mind. Just put, uh, put it onto the diffuse ambient light, so if you're using deferred and forward. It looks the best, in my opinion. Uh, if you're not do doing deferred shader, you could do a lot more, like, you could hide it with, like, uh, light attenuation and uh, light coloring. You could add more logic to it, so... Because the GI is al al also being applied in the light, or in the lighter area here. We turn it off. Kinda. But, yeah. Like, the GI shouldn't be applied all that much stronger in this area where it's already lit, right? So you want it to be only applied, mostly only applied in the darker area. You could also set up so you have multiple directions of uh, GI. Now it's only from, uh, it only is a camera from uh, like a middle and viewing downward, and that's how it gets its own uh, GI. Basically just a camera with a render texture applied to it. Uh, yeah. And then the, uh, the, the, the GI buffer, as I called it, is just a tiny, tiny render texture, so it doesn't eat up too much um, processing space. <laughs> or processing power, rather. Because you don't want something like a 512 by 512 large texture map. Uh, it would look kind of strange. It would be just like displaying whatever is below it at 1 to 1 pixel ratio or whatever. So you could have it like 4 by 4 even. And by that point you don't really need a blur um, applied to it on the camera. Now you could just use bilinear filtering or trilinear filtering and it would look convincing, it would look okay. I could show it off right now instead of using uh, 16 by 16. Like, it looks alright. The pixel would jump into position, of course, because you the, the precision is so low, but it looks alright. looks convincing enough. But if you have like 16 by 16 and and also apply a blur to it, now you have higher precision and also uh, it won't like jump into pixel won't, pixels won't just jump into a new uh, value or new color, right? Now it's like uh, changing uh, positions and moving around a lot more smoother. But of course, it eats more processing power. But it is a 16 by 16 texture map, so it won't really eat that much processing power. I 
think it's kind of convincing in a way. I think it's a nice, nice concept at least. I haven't really tried it out with more gigantic uh, <laughs> objects like if you have a, I don't know, like a titan, a god moving around. You might have to. Well, then you could ap apply it to individual like segment segments like arms and whatnot. It would look all right, I guess. Yeah. So that's this short kind of video. Um, it's basically just a normal PBR workflow tech, uh, shader with this applied to it. Object position X and Z into two one minus nodes. Add them into the X and Z of the individual respective X and Z on the per, uh, world position. Append them, also combining them to, together. Divide it to get the scale. And then hook that up to the UV channel or UV uh, input on the character, on the texture map input on the texture 2D node. And that's it. And hook it up into diffuse ambient light. Then you have GI, your own GI solution. Hooray! I hope that helps. I hope it's an, a neat concept that you might like. I'll take my leave now. Goodbye.